Hi, I am the Curious Dr. Savage, and welcome to my YouTube channel. So I saw, um, so who am I and what perspective am I coming from when I talk about things here? So I have a PhD in counseling psychology. I'm a licensed mental health counselor in private practice, but I've worked in the mental health field in a variety of roles um, for about 15 years. So um, I saw something floating on the internet the other day that I thought was interesting, and it was somebody was referencing this phenomenon called um, the trauma economy. Um, in the context that I saw it, I think it was being used pejoratively in the sense of like um, sort of, um, you know, uh, accusing somebody of capitalizing on a trauma economy uh, trauma economy in the sense that, um, you know, we kind of highlight a particular tragedy in order to generate, um, money for things, money, you know, whatever, whatever we're exchanging in the economy, whether that's actual capital, social capital, something like that. And, um, it, uh, got my attention cause I was like, Hmm, you know, it's really not novel, this idea that, um, pain and suffering, can uh, present opportunities for profit, right? Um, and then so I kind of started looking and just did uh, a few quick searches on the internet in the sense of like, what is, what is this thing that we're calling trauma economy and how, how are they distinguishing that differently now compared to maybe other times in the past? And um, what I saw is that we don't really have a clear definition of that. Like um, some folks look at it in the context of... Um, uh, you know, some traumas are more valuable than others. So if we look at trauma itself as sort of, you know, as an economic thing in the sense of like some people's traumas are, have higher, can get them more or have like a higher value to do something than others, right? Um, or, you know, there's, there's, you know, some, you know, I think it's probably hard, maybe hard thing to stomach that we can imagine that traumatic experiences or something, you know, uh, you know, to gain from that in the material world in some way. But I think we look at that in the context of things like immigration, um, trying to get out of war zones that we're going to kind of, you know, impose this hierarchy in terms of like, you know, well, who are the folks that are the most traumatized and how do we get them out? And we're making some sorts of decisions about, you know, like a hierarchy that some people are in a worse situation than others or something like that. Um, or that some people have the right kind of trauma or something like that, like given something that's happened to them, that's worthwhile enough to get them out. Um, also tra trauma economy in the sense of like um, people in pain and suffering are naturally going to be gravitated toward searching for something, right? And as soon as, you know, you put a human body in pain or under suffering, that kind of creates a natural state based on our biology and how we're programmed to, um, uh, you know, want something, right? Like want, um, want our pain to go away, want um, safety and security, want um, something to feel better. And so, you know, this pain and suffering then kind of generates the conditions for people to um, have an opportunity to profit off it in some way, right? In the sense of like, oh, if this is the kind of pain and suffering that you're going through, here, I have this thing to sell you that's going to make it better, right? Like I have some sort of balm for that, or I have this program that's going to make it better, or, you know, as a therapist, you know, come to me when you're, when you're suffering and I'm going to make that better for you in some way. Um, and then I think the third way that I was seeing trauma economy being used was in the context of there are political, social, and economic systems, which we know inherently generate trauma, like war, right? So then, you know, when we engage in these things, we also know that we are necessarily then generating the conditions for folks to be traumatized. And so then, you know, then that creates this whole other system of, um, uh, you know, pain generating machine then. And then when you engage in those systems that generate pain, then you can also come there on the back end and be like, yeah, here's this pain you're experiencing and let me, let me give you this thing that's going to fix it. And then that provides opportunities for income, uh, you know, or people to profit off it in some way. It doesn't have to be actually physical dollars. It could be social capital. It could be any, any number of things. Um, and then, you know, looking at trauma, you know, I think the other context that I saw it in was like um, uh, sex trafficking, where, you know, we have this entire economy that is based in large 
in large portion upon people being traumatized, right? Where, um, you know, and what I'm referring to there is people who are not consenting adults to be in those situations, right? So like, I'm not necessarily looking at um, individuals who are consenting to sex work and then able to operate in sex work, entire, sex work entirely within their consent. Um, you know, it's looking more at those, like the exchange of, you know, the exchange of bodies, right? Like we're inherently generating trauma through this economic practice, right? Um, uh, yeah, and, but here's the thing. And then when I started to really, you know, think a little bit more about, well, this trauma economy thing, like where, you know, that isn't novel, that didn't just start after, I didn't just start recently, right? Like I think when we when you look at it, you you really start to see people highlight, um, you know, war or nine eleven or you know some of these key historical moments as you know kind of generating this economic gain in some way from uh, pain and suffering of people or from this traumatic event. But that gets hard for me because it's like, well, when did that when did that start? Because in my mind, you know, here's the thing: it's like one of our most <clears throat> you know, we just have, you know, humans have, you know, some things that are pretty keyed into our biological programming, right? In the sense of like, when we're in pain, like our body is built to generate pain to get us to stop something, right? It's to get us to, you know, it's um, when we're in pain, we want to stop the pain, right? And that, um, I mean, that's just such a fundamental part of who we are and how we're built that that programming can be leveraged by other people to profit off it in some way. And so, um, and, you know, and the, the few people that I was seeing that were using it pejoratively, like, um, you know, like a Candace Owens or Kanye West, I think he was also saying it that, you know, diminutively in the sense of like, you know, oh, you guys are just participating in this, um, you know, trauma economy and, you know, something like that. But it, but it's like, it didn't, it didn't just start now, or it's not just relegated to current times. It's like, if you look at religion in some way, um, and I'm just going to go with the religions that I'm the most familiar with, because I don't want to speak um, to things that I haven't looked at and studied as much. But I mean, you know, if we're looking at a trauma economy as leveraging that human you know, that instinctive human need to get out of pain when we find ourselves in pain, then something like Christianity capitalized on that, right? In the sense of, you know, um, here you're suffering, I have something that's going to fix that, right? Because that's one of the under, other kind of fundamental conditions of humanity is that there's going to be suffering, there's going to be pain, like we're going to lose people that we love. People that we love are going to hurt us and betray us. Um, other people that we don't know are going to hurt us. I mean, it's just... It's one of those things where I, I just don't think it's possible to, you know, be a human and avoid any, you know, pain, right? I think there's definitely some that we can, you know, shut out of our lives more than others. But so, you know, then we have this, you know, religious thing where, you know, we have kind of this primal story of look at all this suffering, look at all this suffering in the world. And here, here's how you fix it, right? Or come to us, you know, come pray, come to the churches, come, come do these things and, it's going to get better. Right. And then that's, so in my mind, um, I don't know, this trauma economy thing, like, you know, and how do we as therapists participate in that? Right. Cause I mean, my economic well being depends on me having clients, right. It depends on people coming to me, um, that are, you know, people don't come to me when stuff is good. You know, people call me when stuff isn't going well and that they're, they're trying, they're in that seeking state where it's like, I'm in pain and suffering and I want that to end. And I'm coming to you because I have, I have a, you know, some idea that maybe you're going to be a little better at that than something I'm trying or that's something else that I'm getting from. So in my mind, I don't know. So I guess I don't know. I don't like that the trauma economy thing is maybe getting leveraged in a pejorative way. I think it's inherently problematic because human beings that are in pain are always going to be searching for something. And as long as somebody's searching for something, there's probably going to be somebody there capitalizing on that economic opportunity. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, throwing stones in glass houses in the sense of like, where, who, who isn't profiting from that? in some way. I think that there are people that are going to be disproportionately more affected by it negatively. Um, yeah, so at any rate, trauma economy, apparently this is a thing 
maybe a thing we're tossing around like it's a bad word, but um, where where does that where does that stop? Because I think I'd be hard pressed to find any like when in human history have we not done that? When in human history have we not, in some way, leveraged human pain for financial gain? Right. It's like um, so many of the things we're inundated with on social media, in um, our online space, in our life space, and just the market in general relies upon our emotions. It relies upon us needing something outside of ourselves to make, you know, at least to give us the perception that we feel better. Um, so I mean, is Amazon a trauma economy in the sense of like, um, you know, you need people to be envious of something somebody else had, or you need somebody to think that they're lacking, or you need somebody to not be okay, um, unless they buy a thing, right? So I guess in my mind, you know, I'm seeing this thing like trauma economy and the potential for it to become a, a bad buzzword when it's just like, um, who who isn't in the trauma economy? How are we gonna how are we gonna differentiate that? So at any rate, um a little more philosophical um tangent, I guess, today, but it was on my mind, so I was like, well I might as well talk it out and get a video out because I'm I'm guessing that um well, I mean this is <laughs> it's gonna be true for the entirety of humanity, right? So how do we talk about this differently or yeah, start to unwind it or what's what's the alternative? What's the alternative? Like, how do you remove all profit from pain? Hmm. I'll keep thinking on it. Thank you for tuning in, listening to my ramblings. Obviously, you know, if you have something to add to the conversation or think that, you know, um, give your perspective, I'm totally open to that because that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to generate a conversation like, what is this thing? And what is what is the outside of this thing look like? Like, what is being beyond it look like? So... If it's helpful for you, please like and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in.